Uh, it's titled Swinging for the Fences, How to Generate Huge Returns Through Mispriced Options. Start off with the risk disclaimer, again, educational videos. Um, a lot of the trades that we talk about or trade setups that we talk about are where we see value in the market. They're not direct trade recommendations for anybody. Okay, so again, Jonathan Rose, owner, ActiveDayTrader.com. So the trade that we're going to discuss today is a trade that's near and dear to me. And the reason it is, I was a market maker on the Chicago Board Options Exchange for four years. And when I started as a market maker, if the last trade in a given option was a dollar, the market makers would be 60 cent bid, they'd be willing to buy it for 60 cents, and they will be willing to sell it for $1.40. So over time, those markets got smaller and smaller, they got squeezed. So the edge went from being in the market maker's favor to being in the retail trader's favor. So now those same markets that were 60 cents at $1.40 are like 98 cents at $1.02. And so once those markets got squeezed like that, I said, forget it. I'm not staying on this side anymore. All the edge has gone to the retail side. So I left the market making side and joined the retail side. And that's what we're going to discuss today, how to take advantage of mispriced options. So here's what we're going to discuss. One, how to find cheap options. Next, we'll discuss maximizing your leverage, the right kind of leverage. How to find 10 to 1 payoffs that are priced closer to 3 to 1. And we made sure no options knowledge required. We start this very, very basic. And the reason we do that is because, therefore, people who are learning are coming with a blank slate. They're a lot more open to learning maybe than someone who's already have kind of preconceived trading strategies. For me personally, to this day, I still use 10% of my trading account to this strategy. The only time where I don't use 10% is if I'm traveling and then I use about 80 or 90% because it's a trade that you do not have to manage. So quick discussion on leverage. Buying a stock for $50. If we buy 100 shares, we need $5,000. It goes up to 70. 40% return or $7,000. Drops down to 30, 40% loss or $3,000 in our account. Now, the difference with options, last trade $50, if we were gonna buy the 60 calls. So if I'm buying the 60 calls, all I'm really doing is buying stock at 60. Well, why would I wanna buy stock at 60 if it's trading at 50? because I get leverage. We can buy little bits of stock rather than the entire stock. So if I buy 60 calls for a dollar, if I buy one option, it's $100. Now if the stock goes up to 70, those calls are gonna be worth $10 at expiration because we're long stock at 60. 70 minus 60 is 10, less the $1 we paid for it, or that would be valued at $900 or a 900% return. On the other side, if the market drops down to 30, we don't want to be long stock from 60, so our calls will expire worthless. We could exercise them and be long, but that would be silly. We'd lose $30 on that trade, so that would be ridiculous. Let it go out worthless, but we would lose our principal. It would be 100% loss. So sometimes strategies are good for stocks, sometimes they're good for options, but we can see from this example there's a big difference between the leverage that we get between stocks and options. And now a quick discussion on money management. Now, why do casinos always make money? Well, for one, the odds for every game are stacked in favor of the casinos. But there's also an argument that would say that even if it was 50-50, the casinos would still make a ton of money. And that's because of something called mental accounting. And mental accounting is why we spend more on our credit card than we will when we have cash in our pocket or why we constantly the retail customer sells good stocks and ends up keeping the bad stocks but this is what mental accounting is and I'll describe it through a story husband and wife go to Vegas they have a thousand dollars to gamble with and end up losing all their money they go upstairs to go to bed the husband notices five dollar chip on the uh, and the bed stand 
So he decides to go downstairs, play roulette. He puts that $5 on the number 17, and he turns five into $175. Feeling lucky, he presses his luck, ball lands on 17 again, and he makes $6,125. Now he's really excited. One more time, he lets it ride. The ball lands on 17, and he wins $7.5 million. Now the groom, or the husband, wants to place the bet again, but the casino won't let him. So he goes next door, finds a different casino, bets on 17 at the roulette table with his $7.5 million, and he makes $262 million. One more time, the ball lands on 18, and he loses all of it. Now, really bummed out, he goes back to his hotel room. His wife wakes up and says, honey, where have you been? Oh, I was downstairs playing roulette. How did you do? Not bad. I lost $5. So this is mental accounting. This is compartmentalizing dollars based on where it came from. He was, so the husband was acting as if that's the house's money. That's not really his money. But as we know, and it's a lot more difficult to execute, dollars are dollars. But traders get caught up in these mental accounting games more often than we think. And it really, really hurts when it comes down to money management specifically with this kind of trade because we're going to lose four out of five times, but when you make money in this kind of trade, you're going to make a lot of money quick. This was my wow moment with this trade. In front of you, a stock called SRPT. When I was trading on the CBOE, we called this Serpent. We always gave silly names to different tickers. SRPT is what we call a gappy stock. On this chart, it's about two years or two and a half years, low of $3 and a high of 98. It trades 50, it trades 10, it trades 40, it trades 10. So it gaps all over the place. SRPT has something that we call jump risk. Jump risk is a stock that could close and open the next day and be 50% higher or 100% higher. Stocks like Apple, Amazon, Google, those don't have jump risk. Apple's not gonna close and open 50% higher. Back in 2012, I sent this email to my trading desk. Barron's ran a one-pager on Serpent. SRPT was quoted as developing a godsend drug for muscular dystrophy. Stock trades at 1050, market cap around 200 million. So I recommended this stock to our trading desk. The problem with small stocks and options, they're not necessarily as liquid, but stocks at 1050, 200 options came in offered at the 14 strike. I personally bought 40 of them. The rest of the desk bought the rest. Well, a couple days later, SRPT jumped like it likes to jump, and we came in, and it was trading $40. So I bought 40 of these SRPT, 14 calls for 30 cents. 40 times 30, I invested $1,200, knowing that I was going to risk principal. The stock was at 1050. So buying stock at 14 was an aggressive play, but I had a reason for doing it and thought that I would get paid off. I was expecting to get paid off 15, 20 to one if we were correct. Well, we came in, stock was trading $40, and I profited $104,000. Now, we were not expecting to get paid 100 to one on this play. We were expecting, as I mentioned, to get paid 15 to one, 20 to one, okay? Sure, so we got lucky with the 100 to 1, but luck is the residue of good design. And by putting yourself in enough situations where you're getting better odds, then you put yourself in a position to take advantage of a lucky situation. Now, who is this trade for? Well, for one, equity traders and option traders, but the most important thing is you need to be willing to follow a simple set of rules. This is not one foot in, one foot out. It's buying into the process, and then, then you'll get the most benefit. You know, a sports analogy, when Chip Kelly went to coach the Eagles, it wasn't, you know, he's going to go and who's going to be willing to adapt to his methodologies. It was either you're going to follow or you're going to get kicked off the team like he's done with a bunch of uh, Deshaun Jackson and others. Next, it's for beginners and options. 
we start at the very, very basic of op options and build it up. And what's great about beginners is it's a blank slate, so no options knowledge is required. Next, small accounts. That example with SRPT, I didn't have to buy 40 of them. I could have bought four for $120. Great thing about options is buy 10, you could buy 100, you could buy one. And lastly, adventure seekers. And I kind of say that you know in jest, but it's fun. I've been trading for 18 years. Trading is a grind. Trading in order to have a long career, you need discipline, you need to do, you have to be extremely consistent. Most of the strategies are things that are going to be selling options where we'll be making money often. This is buying little options, so we're going for really, really big fish here. I'll tell you who's this not for. It's holy grail seekers, stubborn traders. As I said, it's a methodology that I've proven that works, but you have to buy in. And it's also not something you just plug and play and it starts spitting out cash through the side of your computer. So no holy grail seekers. It just doesn't work like that. So this is what I found hurts the most traders, specifically professional traders. On the left, stock market efficiency. But I'd like you to put in your own business there, whatever business you're in. On the bottom, years. Let's go out 20 years. The market in the purple is going to evolve. It's going to grow. Automated trading. As I mentioned earlier, market making. The markets went from 60 cents at $1.40 to 90 cents at $1.02. They're getting more efficient. That's what markets and that's what business does. Over time, it gets more efficient. Traders, on the other hand, in the green, they make money in their early years or whenever they make money and then equate making money with being smart and figuring out the markets. And they stop working and stop trying to evolve with the markets and they wait for the market to come back to them. Or business, you wait for business to come back to you and business or the market's not going to come back to anyone. It's going to keep growing so in trading, you really have to stay up to date with the market and you have to pivot when the market pivots and we can't sit here and complain about automated trading or tight markets. We need to evolve and take advantage of those and the way I found to take advantage of those is I see now these option markets, especially with the more illiquid stuff, are just off value. They're mispriced in a lot of ways. Now here's why this trade makes sense. As an options market maker, I could speak to this. And option market makers now, they don't price on value, they price purely on customer flow. And what I mean by this is there's automated market making programs. The traders that are monitoring those automated market making programs are kids right out of school getting paid $40,000 on year end salary. But what they're doing is they're not really market making, they're babysitting the computers that are actually doing the market making and the computers have no common sense. Third, we have the pick of the litter of any stocks or any options to trade. For those who listen to my daily videos, I like to find trades that are a 10. One out of 10 that are a 10. If they're a nine or an eight, I'm not interested. I'd rather play with more money on a 10 than to spread out my risk between trades that are not as good as some other trades. I just don't do that. I treat every trade equal. If it's good enough to do, then it's a trade. There's no one trades better than the next. So we have the pick of the litter. We can go through thousands of stocks and 10,000 different strikes in order to find exactly what we want to do. Market makers don't have that luxury. Lastly, and I'll group these final two together, this strategy is uncorrelated to other trades and it's also a market hedge. And let me explain. By buying cheap options, by buying little options, they're priced so inexpensive because the market's not expected to trade at those levels. So that's why four out of five or eight out of 10 are gonna lose money. But when do those levels actually come into play? When do those levels come in the money? Well, I'll tell you, when the market's going to get destroyed. And when the market gets destroyed, 
all of a sudden levels that nobody thought could actually get hit are coming in the money. So our personal investments are not doing great. But this becomes a market hedge because these little trades, these little trades where we invested $100 or $1,000 are all of a sudden coming into the market and possibly hitting a 15 to 1, 20 to 1, or even 100 to 1. Investing on your left. In investing, it's been definitively proven that we need to diversify. And by diversifying, we put ourselves in a better position to earn greater returns and reduce our risk. This has been proven as far as the investing world. Traders, in my opinion, make a drastic mistake by isolating their risk in one kind of trade. So you don't only want to buy stocks. You don't only want to sell. You don't only want to be a buyer of volatility or a seller of volatility. You want to be able to put yourself in high value situations across a couple of different trades because by diversifying, we're actually reducing our risk. Even if we're putting ourselves in a higher risk investment, if it has zero correlation to our other trades or our other investing, we're still lowering our risk. And that's been proving, proven through investing. Now, why diversify? As I said, it reduces our risk and our volatility, avoids correlations. The highest risk that I find is when we have our trading account all in one kind of trade. Even if it's not a risky trade, whenever you put all your uh, eggs in one basket, that's when we have our most risk. So it reduces our sensitivity to market swings. And there's definitive mathematical proof that diversifying works, and it's easy to learn. A couple of things on options. People who buy options, this is just overall broad. People who buy options, you're going to have 90% losers and 10% winners. That's what buying options is and your long volatility. Now, people who sell options, you're going to have 90% winners, but on your 10% losers, you have to make sure you don't lose as much as your 90% winners, and that's short volatility. That's just overall people like to either buy options or they like to sell options. Now, what drives value in options? I would say 99% of the street uses the Black-Scholes model as the options valuation model. And let's use Apple as an example. If we're going to buy an option in Apple, we know the underlying stock price. We know the option strike price that we're buying. We know the time. We know the risk-free interest rate, but implied volatility. Now, the reason usually you hear professionals talk so much about volatility is it is the one subjective measure in options value. There's five inputs in the main uh, valuation model that people are using. There's only one that we don't know. So that's really the only thing that matters. Sure, those other inputs matter, but they're given. Those are kind of easy to value. The one place where we could take advantage is implied volatility because that's subjective. People are kind of just guessing where the value of volatility is. In front of you, a stock, LNG, uh, about four years of data. On the bottom left, 100 period moving average is the light blue. LNG was right by that 100 period moving average in October, and it rallied up 100% and was off to the races. Just recently, a couple of weeks ago, LNG moved back down to its 100 period moving average on a weekly. Okay, stocks do not like to hang around big numbers. That's just that's that's how stocks behave. So the last time LNG was down by its 100 period moving average, it was about five bucks. It rallied all the way up to a high of nine. Now we to the 100 period moving average. Actually, today I think LNG. But at the stocks just don't want to be by their main. So what we need in the strategy is we need to find stocks that move. The next thing that we need is the price. A lot of these stocks that move a lot 
don't have LNG, not bad, big ask. It's fair. It's not 60 cents at a buck, 48 cents at a buck oh two. So it's not bad. What we have is tradable options. We want stocks that move, and we need tradable options because we need to LNG, 6368. 21 days to expiration, and the average weekly range, which was the range of the last five weeks, $8.50. September 70 calls, $0.68 cents at $0.84. Cents. Let's hypothetically buy 10 70 calls for $0.75. Cents. That would be $750. Now, once we do that, if LNG is under 70, we're going to lose $750 because, as we mentioned earlier, 70 calls, we're just buying stock at 70 when the stock's at 64. But if LNG goes up to 72, 74, or 76, we'll make 1250 3250 or 5250 66% return, 300% return, or a 600% return. The reason I'm showing LNG as an example, because this is an example of cheap volatility. And let me explain why. LNG last trade 64, 63, 68. The average weekly range between the high and the low is $8.50. And that's for, for five weeks in a row, that's been the average. Now, 72 is right within the average for pretty much one week. We have three weeks before expiration in this example. Can LNG trade 76, 78? Absolutely. It's right in line with the amount that it's moving. I actually should have used, it, used this example with the puts because LNG traded all the way down to 50 before expiration. This is expiration September 18th. So it was at 64, it traded down to 50. So this is cheap volatility down at 50, we would have the same 500% return that we would have at 76 or 78. So that's the part of finding cheap volatility. It's definitely out there. And here's four benefits to this kind of trade. For one, and this is going on to why I said that when I go on vacation, maybe I'll have 90% of my portfolio on this. You do the work beforehand, you find good value in options, and then you put the trade on and you're done. There's no staring at the market. Once you're in it, we're going to risk principal. We're going to have to be okay with losing our principal, but then we just forget about it, and then the market's going to do what the market's going to do. One of my uh, you know, key methodologies in trading and what we work on with all of our consulting arrangements is, is you can only control what you can control. And what I mean by that is once you go in the market and put your trade on, you're done. Put yourselves in the best situations possible, and then it's going to work or it's not going to work. In Vegas, whoa, looks like I just, hey, guys, can you guys hear me? It looks like I just got kicked off. Ah, it looks like I'm back on. Can I just get a yes? You're good to go. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sorry, guys. It looks like I just got kicked off and popped right back on. Um, so I, I was saying, so in Vegas, when you get comps in Vegas, when Vegas takes care of their key players, they don't want someone playing a thousand dollars a hand for two minutes. That guy's not going to get a lot of love by the, from the casinos. The guy who is going to get a lot of love is the one who's playing for ten hours, even if they're playing fifty dollars a hand, because the casino knows that they're getting higher odds than they're risking. So they just need time on their side. So my point with trading is we do our work beforehand, put ourselves in the best situation, but I don't care what the market does, but I know over time that I'll make money from this strategy. The market's going to do what it's going to do. Sometimes it's going to work out, sometimes it's not. But if I put myself consistently, consistency, consistently, pardon me, in the best situation to succeed, that's what I try to do. Next, this is easy information to learn, but it's difficult to attain. And then finally, as we mentioned, diversifying improves our returns, 
and drastic, drastically reduces our risk. And let's do one more example with LNG. H26, this is with three days to expiration. This is the weekly options. The average weekly range, $8.50, as we mentioned. Three days to expiration. So with three days to expiration, average weekly range, I could expect maybe $5 of movement, right? That's fair. Last five weeks, an average of $8.50 range, three days left. I'll take $5. That's not unreasonable. Can it move seven? Sure, that's not crazy. It's probably not going to move 12, but it's probably not going to move a dollar. So that's kind of where I value this. I think it'll move four or five bucks. And then as we can see, three days later, not too surprising, LNG rallies up to 64. And this is with three hours to expiration on a Friday. And on the next slide, we put them side to side, side by side. LNG 59, three days later, it's trading 64. Now on the call side, the 62 strike, a 10 lot, $300, would now be worth 2,000. 63, $200 is now worth 1,100. 64, 120 is worth 380. And so we can see the risk, we're risking principal, but we're not going after two to one returns. We're going after 500% returns. So today I'm gonna present to you guys a workshop. And in that workshop, here's what you'll learn. And I went over this workshop, probably 20 hours to make it, and I really wanted to make it beginner friendly. So this is what we did. How to drive a screener to find the right stocks. The screener that we use, I use FinViz, F-I-N-V-I-Z. -I, I use FinViz because it's a free screener and anyone could use it. And I wanted to be talking with Apple, and I wanted to be talking apples to apples to people who move forward with the workshop. Then we take those stocks and we find the best trades. We discuss how to risk small to gain big and why diversification is so necessary in our trading. And then finally, how to value options and find trades with awesome returns. A couple of client testimonials. First, from Michael, stockbroker. And we work with a lot of stockbrokers because stockbrokers are looking for trade ideas for their clients. I've been in the market for 30 plus years and have always followed the VIX. Your workshop showed me how to use volatility to quickly protect my client's portfolio. Thanks. And then from Seth, I am new to active day trading and Jonathan's teaching approach makes sense to me. He makes a complex topics into something easy to understand. Thank you. And then finally, this is the workshop. Our ADD's work, ADT's workshop, Swinging for the Fences. We retail this for $500. As I mentioned, I w it took about 20 hours to make this workshop because I really wanted to make sure it was digestible for all. But in going over and talking to our premier members, this is what we thought would really help. And what we're gonna do is do a live webinar session, October 4th, Sunday night, and it'll be recorded if people can't make it. And what we're gonna do is to go over the entire workshop. So you'll have a week and a half or whatever the time period is, learn, go through it, watch it once, twice, whatever you want, and then come in the live webinar session, we'll go through the workshop, we'll do a Q&A, and then it's Sunday night, we're gonna run the screener together and, sh and, and show where we see value for the trades for the week ahead. And we're gonna do the two of these together for our special offer for 297. So we did this a couple of weeks ago with 50 person deadline and it sold out fairly quickly in about a week. We added 25. The reason why we're limiting this uh, workshop is because back to my SRPT example, there was 200 options offered I bought 40 of them. I would have liked to buy 200 of them, but the desk took the rest. The really good trades and the really good options, there's not an infinite amount available. So we don't want to cannibalize the trade by making this available to 500 or so. 
So that's the reason why we're really limiting it. And there we go. I'd like to open it up for questions and uh, go from there. Uh, TJ asking, do we put stops in the market? TJ, let me just explain. Uh, TJ asking if we put stops in the market. So again, this trade is set it and forget it. We're looking for really good value in the option space, but we're looking to buy little, little calls and little puts. So if you can buy nickels, five cents, 10 cents, 15 cents, that's what you're doing. So you're buying those, but there's not really a stop because if you buy a 10 cent option, it's yours. So you're either going to lose on a 10 lot, $100, or you're going to make money. So it's not necessarily like just trading a stock where a stop would make sense. So the answer is no, we, we don't. Now a couple of stocks that we're looking at right now, which is ideal for this kind of strategy, is JKS, which is Jinko Solar. Now take this on a little bit longer term chart just so you guys can see the volatility in this name. So Jinko Solar is all over the place. 32, down to 14, up to 24. This is a stock that likes to move. And if you can find some really good weekly options while volatility is still low, this fits ideally into the strategy. A couple more questions here. So are, you, uh, so are you placing your sell target at the time you get filled? Uh, Dale asks. Uh, Dale, once you, once you own it, so if the stock's at, okay, let's use JKS as, as an example. JKS, let's say the last trade is 24. If the last trade's at 24 and these 25 calls right here, if we were to buy those for a dime, if JKS by tomorrow's close trades over 25 and we buy a 10 lot, you're going to be long 1,000 shares of JKS from 25. After that, you can cover, you can hold it, then you just want to kind of trade it. But the what we're trying to do is leverage ourselves and get a big position in a stock for you know pennies on the dollar. So for instance, if I bought these for a dime at the 25 calls for a dime, the stock's at 2411, and then by tomorrow it's 26, yeah, I'll sell 26s. Maybe I'll sell 2550s. So after that, then you're just managing money. Can you use this for day trading? You can use this for weekly trading, only day trading when it comes down to Thursday or Friday. Um, it's a diff I wouldn't recommend it for you know kind of like a, for those who trade 50 times a day. It's not like that, but there are times where you're buying these for a dime. Back to this JKS example, and if JKS right now rallies 50 cents those are going to be 20 cent bid and you can make a quick 100% on your money. So again, for more active traders, that's going to be about managing money. Now, a couple of questions on Apple. Now the problem, let me just sign back in because I got booted. The problem with stocks like Apple or Amazon or Google is they're not going to have the reason to move like that LNG example. In LNG, that was weekly, going back for a couple of years, finally by, it, by its 100 period moving average. So that was really priced to move. That had a real catalyst to move. Amazon's, Apple's, any stock that has huge volume like that, it's usually covered by 20, 30, 40 analysts. The more analysts that cover a stock, 
the less mispricing that you're really going to find. So for me, and that's what we touch on on the, on the uh, workshop, is we show you how to find these stocks that move, how to find stocks with favorable options in order to trade, and then there's mispricing. As far as an Apple, Amazon, Google, there's not much mispricing. Those are really, really driven by institutional traders. So it's very difficult for retail to, you know, find high risk, uh, low risk, high reward plays. So a couple of more things before kind of running out of time. As we mentioned, diversifying your trading account, huge. We can only control what we can control, and we need to be aware of the mental accounting. Now, I do want to add that you have zero risk. And for those who have uh, participated in some of Active Day Trader's offerings, you're aware of this, but 100% satisfaction guaranteed. And if you don't love it, it doesn't make sense for either one of us. So no questions asked. I don't want your money. It needs to make sense, and that's why we're doing a follow-up live webinar where we can discuss this with whoever bought it and then ask as many questions as you want. And my objective is to provide 10 times the value that you'd expect from this course when you got in. So here's what you get. Again, Active Day Trader swinging for the fences. You can go to activedaytrader.com forward slash swing. Swing is case sensitive, so lower class, lower case, excuse me. Uh, this is being recorded for a couple who are asking, so yes. Um, I really like short-term options trades. Whoever asked that, I can't see, oh, there we go. Oh, uh, thanks, Reed. So Reed just threw in the active day trader forward slash swing. Um, I really like short-term options trades, a question. Oh, that's interesting. So a question saying, uh, set it and forget it trade implies that once I'm in a trade, I might not I might not look at that again until it approaches expirations when in fact I could give up lots of my money. Um, I do feel like by not paying attention to the market, you can be susceptible to that, but over time, and maybe some of you can relate to me on this, is by not touching our winners, our winners end up really to go a lot further than we think. I think it's kind of a, a sucker's play where retail gets caught where, where we're covering our winning trades and then letting our losers ride. So I always want to go through my portfolio, go through all my trades. I always write down the reasons why I get in a trade. And then when I'm going over my trades, if those reasons still exist, I stay in the trade. That's it. I don't really look at the profits. I don't really look at the P&L. If those reasons have changed, then I'm going to get out of the trade. I mean, I like to keep things way, way simple. Define it, write it down, and if something changes, I'm out. That's fine. And if not, I'll stay in because you need to make a bunch of money on trades in order to, you know, really profit in the long term. You, you can't get out of all your good stuff. Uh, someone asked, being a, a new trader, is this good or we're kind of starting bankroll? You know, I can't talk directly about money, but this is ideal for smaller accounts because you can risk $50 to try to make $200 or $300 or $200 to try to make $1,200 or $1,400. So from what I found and from those that I've worked on, worked with, smaller accounts work, work really well with this. And again, yes, this is being recorded, um, so you guys will all have access to it. Okay, let's just go through one more example here, and I think our time is running up. Tata Motors is another stock that's just priced to move, and the illiquidity is actually helping us from by trading the options, by looking for little options. And as we can see, Tata Motors, another stock that likes to gap 52 all the way down to 22, 
it just bounced. No coincidence that that low of 22 is the same low as that 2013 September low. And now, who knows where a stock like this is valued? What's the difference between 32 and 22 when a stock is moving like this? So that's why I love trying to search out little options, whether it's a week expiry or two weeks, in order to really capitalize on the next time this thing moves. Because Tata Motors, we could wake up tomorrow and it could be trading 32 or 33. There's no difference when stocks start to move this quickly. And then we go look at the options of Tata Motors. So expiring tomorrow, not great markets, but as we expand further, we start to see a 27 strike quarter at 35 cents, 15 cents at 35. I'll also really, uh, you know, as a side note, whenever we see markets 15 cents at 35 cents, don't buy those 35 cents, okay? We're just making friends with the market makers, and they're going to go right in there and be quarter bid to try to get out of their trade. <clears throat> Pardon me. I would always encourage you to be 20 cent bid. Put the bid in there. If you get hit and you get filled, great. If you don't get filled, there's plenty of other trades to do, but it's really important to make sure that you get a price that you're comfortable with the value. Big difference between paying 20 cents on a 10 lot, 200, or buying those 35s, 350 versus $200. There's a big difference. So we have to be really careful about the prices that we're willing to pay. Um, okay. And again, just to go over, activedaytrader.com forward slash swing 297. We usually retail this for $500. And again, just to make sure everyone is fully comfortable with the, with the workshop, we're going to do the October 4th live. It'll be Sunday night. We'll be recording it. And that's when we'll go through the entire workshop Q and A and also talk about different plays for the week using this kind of strategy.